Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Knights of the Old Republic. Alrighty, when we left off, we had discovered a crystal cave after wandering around Dantooine for a little bit and solving a problem with a robot that was being essentially used by the woman to replace the dead husband in ways I do not want to comprehend nor understand. But unfortunately, I do. So, uh, we're going to move on from that disturbing, disturbing, disturbing thought. And uh, just get some crystals from our caves here. Apparently, we're going to have to kill our way into it through some kinraths. But uh, here's hoping it turns out good in the end. Here's hoping. Really all I can hope for. Oh, strikes me now that I should probably wait until the others are in range. There we go. That way I can minimize the amount of damage caused to, well, mainly my guy. <laughs> my guy and my guy alone. As long as it's passed on to everyone else as well, it's probably going to be okay. I should probably attack them instead. Okay. Well, it's going good thus far. Ooh, this looks like it's going to give me a lot of crystals. There are so many crystals around here. There's no way this can't go well. Oh, Zalbar's taking a lot of damage here. I'm gonna heal him up a little bit and then get back on the attack. Awesome! Oh, no! Okay. Well, could have gone worse. Salbar is going to need constant healing until uh, that poison wears off, but that's fine. Crystal formation. Yay! Lightsaber crystal. And a lightsaber crystal. Oh, the Kinrath eggs. I'm not sure I want to break those to get crystals. The way I understand it, if I do, I would get red crystals, which is not something I necessarily need nor want. A response package, Durasteel bonding alloy. Huh. That's a, that's a thing that's available, I guess. Um, Kinrath egg. Crystal formation. There we go. Um, I just want more crystal formations, but if there's none that are available, I guess there's none. Well, there we go. I guess that's all there is. Let's uh, see what we got. Oops. I meant to hit the other button, which was new buttons. Ooh, there's a green. And a couple of Rubat crystals and Bondar crystals. Bondar being extra stun. Uh, the Rubat being extra damage and attack boost, which would be one of those extra power crystals there. A yellow... Oh, so just a blue and a green. I was hoping for more green. Damn it. Uh, and just to prove my point, I will bust open one of the eggs. The crystal is found in the remains of the egg. Whoops, that was not the button I wanted to hit. The button I wanted to hit was that. And see, it only gives you red. This was just for educational purposes only. That's the only one I'm going to bust. So, just to prove I'm correct, that was why I did it. It will only give you red crystals and that's it. Because you are taking a life to get a crystal. And we all know red is evil. That's how it works. I keep hitting that button. Why do I keep hitting that button? Because <laughs> I'm stupid. Alright. 
So that's taken care of. I think there is one more crystal cave on Dantooine. I'm probably wrong. I'm more than likely wrong. But I shall continue to search regardless as a means to eventually get the good shit. Which is hopefully two green crystals. More of you. Ugh. Just not able to escape you. I keep hitting that button because of the different games I play. I'm, I think I'm hitting that button because of the bio, other Bioware game I'm playing. <laughs> Which is Dragon Age 2, in case no one was aware. Well, not Dragon Age 2, Dragon Age Origins. I have played 2. That is not the point. I'm sleepy. I only have had one coffee all of today. Speaking of which, I'm going to pull my coffee closer to me. There we go. It's not cool enough for me to drink yet, but it is there. Thus, I have the ability to eventually drink it. I keep doing that. I'm trying to get the map button. And of course, I can't change the button so that way I can get to the map every single time. And this was a Sandral Grounds, if I remember right. So at this point, I'm just exploring for... Oh, hello! More of you guys, huh? Well then. Um, just to get the plan out ahead of time. Um, I'll just have you focus on, actually, do that, and then have you focus on the Mandalorian I'm fighting, and there, let's do it, got you do it, help a little bit, alright, I'm only hoping it'll help out a little, I'm now realizing I probably put out, should have put on the energy shield. This is fine. This is fine. I'll I'll do it. I'm a do it. I'm gonna do it, guys. I'm gonna do it. Oh come on. Die already, please. Thank you. It may have been by missions blaster bolt, but damn it, at least you died. And I'm gonna help Zalbar. Cause he needs some help. Uh oh. Uh-oh, I didn't help him fast enough. Problems are now happening. Okay! We do it. <laughs> okay. Equipment pack. Which is a med pack. Fat lot of good that does us. Uh, I'll just use it on Zalbar. There we go, just to get it. Sure out of the way and a foot locker eh, not bad not great not bad repair kit and an another med kit stabilizer gauntlets and a mandalorian data pad some other remains which is a adrenaline amplifier uh, let's use that other med pack on you. There we go. Uh, swap to me. Use that. Good. Now, let's check on that. Oh, it's just the same data pad as the other one. That's stupid. Ooh, the stabilizer gauntlets add to demolitions. These gauntlets are quite stiff, minimizing actions that might interfere with the manipulation of volatile chemicals, or ma rather materials. Bit of both. The user must have basic knowledge of demolitions, paid points into the skill, which as long as it has one, as long as there's one point in demolitions, these will actually help to benefit from this item. So they actually have to at least know something better than nothing. So, uh, as it stands, I'm going to check who knows what. Uh, that's this one. You have nine, 
and mission has 14. She already has a bonus of plus three to it. We might as well make her our mine sweeper since she's essentially going to be our skilled person. Skilled person. Uh, there, there's a term. There's a term that some have used for what I'm using her for. I'm not going to use that term. Uh, I shall... <laughs> I shall instead refer to it... <laughs> refer to her as our skill person. And, uh... That shall be all I say on the subject. Uh... Davik's visor would be a good addition, but... I think awareness is probably a better one. Um... Uh, I don't need improved power blast, so I might give that to Karth, maybe? I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. I have decided I'm going to upgrade the shit out of this until I get another lightsaber, but that's all I know I'm going to do. I might add that stun crystal to it as well. Unless I get a better, cooler, awesomer crystal. Which is entirely a possibility. Alright, well, these... Whoa, is that an albino one? That is an albino one in the middle of that group. I have a feeling that thing is going to be a big problem. Which is why I'm going to let this one come to us and then deal with it as we go. Uh, up to them. Because the more we can pick off the enemies, the better. Okay. Yep, it's an albino cat hound. Alright. Alright, well that one's taken care of. I thought I would easily swipe through that one. I did not. Oh boy, uh, <laughs> I noticed Salbar's in trouble. Uh, advanced med pack, maybe, hopefully, in time. I'm hoping. Oh boy, oh boy, this thing is going to be very, very hard to beat. Oh, and it's healing. Oh, joy. Please let me please take it out. Oh, please. Woo! Okay. Yes. All right, at least you two leveled up. At least you two benefited. <laughs> oh, I did it. I don't think I've ever seen that one, actually. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen something like that in a Bioware game. I think you mainly see that in Bethesda. I, I only assumed it would be stronger because of Bethesda games, and apparently I wasn't wrong. Huh. Anyway. Um... Let's continue to up treat injury. Uh, maybe I should up repair. Nah. I'll go for awareness for now. There we go. Um, he's already in dueling. Yep. So, uh,. I guess really the only thing I should be doing is improving his uh, weapon skills. Oh, he's already at implant level 3. Okay, cool. Uh, hmm. Negative 3 penalty to hit. It seems 
it just adds to the damage, but the penalty remains the same throughout. I guess it'd probably be best to focus on that, if anything. That's about the best idea I have when it comes to that. The uncanny dodge. Alright, good enough. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Level up our skill person a little further. How is treat injury a cross-class skill? That's what I want to know. Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Okay, that's up, that's up, that's up. And I guess we'll go to treat injury. Just to use the points. Sneak attack. V. Alrighty. Sneak attack 5. I already know it. Don't yell at me in the comments. Alright, so. I am more light side than... Mission currently, just barely. How is... I'm a little annoyed. How is her defense higher than mine? Grr, I'm annoyed. Okay. That's slightly annoying. Slightly annoying. Alright. Okay. Welp. Alright. Alright. Uh, new items. There's not really anything new. Uh, go through all and then just eliminate that so I don't have to see that thing flashing the entire god's damned time. Okay, cool. Alright. We made it. Just barely. Ah, shit. Alright, you know what? I'm not even going to chance it. Damn it. You all did nothing. You literally did nothing. I am so mad right now. I am so annoyed right now. You all suck. Okay. Well then. Here I am at the Sandral Estate, I'm assuming. Oh, that's a big old ship there. Huh. It's a big old ship they have on top of their house. I guess it makes sense. Considering they probably go off-world to make their money in some way, shape, or form. I guess it kind of makes sense. This time, I'm mainly assuming it's a ship. It might not be a ship. But considering how the top of the thing looks, it's probably a ship. All right. Every once in a while, I'm going to add to my health. There we go. Because no one else seems to look out for me. And I guess we'll go around to see if there's anything on the other side of the estate. If it's a big old negatory, I'll just move the fuck on. Yep. Nothing. Okay. Well. Yep, nothing. Really going that way. I guess I just gotta go north. Chair is making noises when my, uh... Sleeve brushes up against it. It's mildly annoying. Alright. See if I can drink my coffee now. Answer is not really. Not really. Well, I'm in the grove now. Well, again. Oh, hi there! 
Joy. Lovely. Okay. And we'll just do a flurry. Damn it. Didn't really help at all. Alright. Okay. There we go. Let's help mission because we're a good friend. We're a good friend that helps our friends. And mission. How about that? Zalbar. Does that sound good to you too? Huh? Yeah, I'm not bitter. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> okay. Well. Been through the grove. Oh. Oh, what? What just happened? Um... I didn't think I was close enough to go that way? I, um... Okay. All right, I guess. This is what I was trying to get to. This was the thing I was trying to do. Hi uh, there, apprentice. Your arrival here is well timed. Uh, who are you? I am Bulo, a Jedi from the Enclave. I was sent by the Jedi Council to investigate a killing that took place here a few hours ago. Communication does not pose a problem as both the suspects and I speak basic and at ease. I was going to handle this case myself, but now that you are here, this could be an excellent opportunity for you to demonstrate how well you have been learning your lessons at the Academy. Though you are not yet a full Jedi, perhaps you could assist me in sorting out the truth from the lies. Uh, what do you want me to do? Listen to the stories given by the two suspects. I have brought an information retrieval droid with access to the archives, both at the Jedi Enclave and the planetary capital. I will use my wisdom and experience to offer you some guidance, but I will not solve the case for you. There is little benefit if you do not solve this problem yourself. Consider each man's account and check the facts with the information droid. Once you have gathered all the evidence you think you need, run through the possible scenario with me. If you are unable to come to a satisfactory resolution, then I will take these men to the Enclave and deal with this myself. Oh, so this is a big old massive test for me to figure out. Okay. According to the accounts of the participants, these three men were out here in the field together earlier, before the clouds broke. I find that very odd, for most people would seek shelter indoors when the sky is filled with dark storm clouds as it was earlier today. But that is not the most puzzling aspect of this case. The dead man, Calder Nedek, was shot in the back with a blaster rifle. A rifle was found lying near his body with bloodstains on it. It has been sent back to the Enclave for analysis. He looks a lot more damaged than just a blaster rifle bolt. Two other men were found at the scene when I arrived. One was Hand and Gold, he was unarmed. The other was Ricard Lusoff, who was carrying a hunting laser. Both men say they did not do anything, and that they came across the body. But both also accused the other. Obviously, there is more to this than what we have been told. Uh, is there anything else I should know? There is one last thing. When I arrived, Handon was holding his side, and Rickard was favoring one of his legs. You would do well to remember this as we progress through the case. If there is anything else you need, I will remain here while you question the witnesses. Sounds good! Alright, so I'm gonna be doing the sleuthy sleuthin'. Okay! Not a... thing that Jedi often do, but I guess... In this case, it's warranted. The body was... where? Over here? Caldernetic. He was apparently shot from behind with a blaster. He looks like a lot more happened to him. I see bits of rib cage. Yeah, I see bits of rib cage and deformed face. 
Unless he's been here for several days, I... Mm, it doesn't seem to be the case. I'm making jokes. I know that's the only dead body model they have. Anyway. So, information droid. That's... I didn't want to talk to you, Zalbar. Not yet. Thank you for being so easily talked to a bull, though. Uh, information droid. That's what I wanted. Hi there. A little bit. I can assist you by accessing the records of both the Jedi and Plain and the central government facilities here in Dantomir. Good! As he said. Please do not hesitate to talk to me. I have already well. retrieved some information from the archives on Gold and Metic, Ricard Lussoff, and Handan Gold. I have also had time to examine the body of Mr. Metic. Is there Good any to know. information you require? All right. What did you find out about the body? My preliminary analysis of the body indicates that he was killed approximately three hours ago by a single energy blast to the torso. Is mm -hmm. there any other information you need? So, single energy blast to the torso about three hours ago. Alright. Fair enough timetable. Uh, tell me about the planes. These planes are rife with wild animals, not all of them benign. Okay. The Iriars are mostly docile, but can easily be provoked to violence. Mm -hmm. Our on the other hand. Are much more deadly. I've noticed. There were 35 catalogued attacks on settlers by cat hounds in the last two weeks. A general advisory was given out three days ago to carry a weapon at all times when on the plains. Small farms and okay. buildings dot the plains and can provide safe refuge for those in need. Is there any other information you need? Yeah, I've run across at least two of them, the Metale and the Sandral Estates. So that does line up. Okay. I will have more questions later. Okay, well. I will be here to assist you. I'm glad you will be. Okay, uh, body is there, hand in gold. Ah, greetings. Hi there. You must be assisting Master Baluk in his investigation. Yes. I'm hand in gold. Perhaps you've heard of me? N nope, not a damn bit. Should I have? Um, I, I guess under the circumstances, no. Well, I yeah. I you wish to hear my story then. Hello. I shall tell you, of course, but there's not much to it. I'm sure that you'll agree that Rickard is quite obviously guilty of murder. You are so matter-of-fact, it's making me suspicious. Days. Yes, running. I do that a lot. Can't stand speeders, never use them. Keeps me in shape, hmm. too, you know. Anyway, I was out running on the other side of that bridge there, when all of a sudden I heard a shot coming from over here. I ran over and found this man Calder lying on the ground, dead. Go on. And I saw Rickard come skulking out of the shadows of the rocks south of the river. And I knew something was wrong. I hit my emergency button and called the Enclave right away. Well, there. That's my story. Now, please hurry this up and arrest Rickard so I can get on with my day. Right. Is there any other information you need? Uh, I can't ask you any more questions. Okay. I will be here to see Wanted to double check. So, he's told me he was running because he doesn't like speeders. All right. Another Jedi, huh? Yep. Helping that Twi'lek investigate, no doubt. He seems Why did you I'm say Rickard, so that so weirdly? Maybe you can figure this out and let me get out of here. Uh-huh. Tell me what happened. Well, I was out hunting Eriaz when I spotted one over here by the bridge. I pull out my rifle and aim at it. I couldn't see it that well, mind you, because the damn sun was in my eyes. Uh -huh. So I shoot it and it drops. I walk over here and find Handon standing over Calder's body. So why don't you get this whole farce over with and send that whiner Handon to the prison he belongs in? Right. Uh-huh. I hope some of you are keeping along at home because you probably caught something in that statement that was a lie. Yes, is there something I can do to help you in this investigation? Uh, I want to discuss the murder. Very well, we should start at the beginning. If we find the truth behind each piece of the puzzle, we will no doubt resolve the case. Hendon said that he was nearby and heard a shot and ran over, only to find Calder already dead. He said Rickard came out of the shadow of the rocks holding a blaster in his hands. Rickard said that he was hunting Eriaz, saw one through the glare of the sun, 
Rickard and shot at it. It is possible that Rickard may have shot Calder accidentally, and Handon may have found the body, but that seems a very unlikely explanation. It is more likely that at least one of them is lying. Obviously, one of these men is not telling us something, but where does the truth lie? Rickard is lying. I was trying to remember the names. I was trying to make sure I was remembering the names right. Why do you believe that? It was cloudy. There was no sun glare. That was one of the key points of the whole story. It was cloudy. Clouds broke just before we got here. There was no way for a sun glare to happen. Yes, well done. It was very cloudy this morning. If it had happened as Rickard said, the sun would not have been visible at the time of the killing. You seem to have caught Rickard in a bit of a lie. It seems I was correct in assuming you could help me with this case. This lie doesn't prove Rickard is guilty, but I think you have taken the first step in unraveling this mystery. We should proceed on to the next point. We need to find a motive for the killing. Maybe you should talk to the men about their relationship with the victim. If there is anything else you need, I will remain here while you question the witnesses. Sounds good. Uh, let's talk the information droid, have a little info in our back pocket before we talk to these guys. What can you tell me about Calder's relationship with Hendon? The southward speeder rental business has records that over the past seven weeks, a speeder has been rented by Mr. Nettick and Mr. Gould. Is huh. there any other information you need? A speeder was rented by Gould and Hendon. Didn't Hendon just get done telling us he doesn't like speeders? But these guys would jointly rent a speeder? Hmm. What can you tell me about Calder and Rickard? According to the municipal authorities near the Garen spaceport, there had been news of violent drunken activity in the cantina attached to the port. Mm -hmm. Apparently, a Mr. R. Lusoff was making accusations at a Mr. C. Nettick about cheating him in a business deal. Jedi Tuka was dispatched to the scene and restored order. Is there okay. any other information you need? Drunken altercation between Calder and Rickard. I... I... I goofed up his last name. It was apparently Neck Netic, not Gold. Oh well. It's Hand and Gold. That's where my name fucking goofed up. I apologize. I'm sleepy. Alright. So, is there anything else about it? Nope. Nothing else I can ask. So, Calder and Handon were renting a speeder together. Calder and Rickard apparently had a drunken altercation at some point uh, over business dealings. Okay. I will have more questions later. Sounds good. Hand in gold. I'm going to heal my guys for a second. There we go. Get closer to full. While I conduct this investigation into murder. Okay. How can I be of further assistance? <laughs> Uh, why would someone want to kill him? Um, well, you see, Calder was involved in some pretty sordid business from time to time. Uh -huh. More often than not, I've heard. Disreputable business practices, even more disreputable clients. I've even heard he had dealings with a hut. A hut here on Dantooine. Now, uh -huh. I bet you're wondering if I had any reasons to kill the man, but I tell you, I hardly knew him. I saw him once or twice, yes, and I've heard some pretty unkind things about him, but certainly nothing that would make me want to kill him. Aha. Uh -huh. You knew Calder better than you admit. You rented a speeder with him. But I, I realize this must seem like a motive to Especially you. Especially since you just lied. You isn't. I dislike Calder, true. I would punch his face in, given the opportunity, but I would not kill him. Hmm. Punch his face in, why? My wife was cheating on me with him. He slept in my own bed while I was in the next room. But, as much as I may hate him for that, I could not kill him. It uh -huh. may have been my own fault for driving my wife away. I must try not to take the law into my own hands. I was just out running, trying to clear my head for the divorce proceedings, not stalking him to kill him. Running is not a crime. Yeah, but lying in the course of this investigation is... 
It, does, it doesn't at least make you look good. So, we have motive. Spousal inf infidelity, rather. That would be definitely grounds enough to give him motive. And we have, apparently, opportunity, because they were in the same field. Uh, means remains to be seen. Uh, that's all for now. Of course, of course. Listen, if you need anything, I shall be glad to assist. Are you sure about that? Are you really sure? Rickard! What's up? What do you want to know? Did you know the victim? Yeah, I knew him. Hell, we've known each other for a good long time. Doesn't mean I really have to have liked the slime ball. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't be so hard on him. Especially now that he's dead. We actually got along pretty well most of the time. We just had our differences. We were actually business partners. Mm -hmm. We were involved in some orbit-to-ground transport operations for Aerotech. Can I leave now? I should probably be the one to give the news to his wife. You thought Calder was cheating you. Now, I don't love Calder, but we go back a long way. We run a suborbital shipping and transport company out of Garang Space. You did mention We've that. been partners in that business for well over 20 years, and we've been doing just fine the way we are. Uh-huh. You can deny it, but there was bad blood between you. We heard about it in your little drunken altercation. Right. All right, he's ignoring it. That's fine. Let's talk to Baluk again. Yes, is there something I can do to help you in this investigation? I want to further discuss the murder. We know Rickard lied about the sun blinding him while he was shooting, but we need more to go on. Let's examine the relationship of each man with the victim. Hendon told me he barely knew the victim. On the other hand, Rickard and the victim were business partners. However, according to Rickard, they got along quite well. On the surface, neither man seems to have a motive for killing Keldor. Uh, Handon is lying. Why do you believe that? He knew his wife was cheating on him. Well, that certainly is a motive for murder. The case is taking shape. However, you mustn't jump into any quick conclusions. Perhaps we should now focus on the murder weapon itself. You might want to see what information the witnesses and the information droid can provide you about the blaster found near the body. If there's anything else you need, I will remain here while you question the witnesses. Sounds good to me. All right. Here's where we're going to pause. To create a cliffhanger for next episode. Because I'm an asshole. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I freely admit I'm an asshole. But... Uh, for right now, we're quite a bit over time, and we have discovered both of them are lying a strange amount, considering the circumstances. Uh, it would be best to not lie at all in this instance, but they don't seem to want to follow that. I guess we'll get to the bottom of that soon enough. So... Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and the only Stray Cat. Playing games and trying to figure out who was the real murderer in this situation. And we're kind of going around kitten crystals and killing cath hounds. Because that seems to be all we can really do on Dantooine for now. Uh, hopefully we can get more good stuff for you.